So let's pick up where the last panel ended with, uh, or started with uh, the why, the reasons, the, the the reason, company reasons to become more family friendly. Actually, the reason that you three companies wanted to join this Expanding Choices initiative and project. So let's start with you, Sergio. Top three wins for your company to be family friendly. Okay, hello, hello for, for everybody. Thank you for the opportunity to speak about my uh, experience. Uh, for us, uh, free, it's uh, first of all, it's uh, a motivation to return uh, to come back to our job mm -hmm. retention the first uh, the second it's uh, i think uh, less stress for uh, my employer and uh, the last one it's uh, uh, satisfaction or uh, employer and uh, good motivation and good uh, productivity best productivity thank you so actually you talk about productivity race that's great and these things you say also, uh, less stress uh, connects to lower sick leave costs maybe, and yes. other wins. Thank you so yes. much. Arta. Tina, first of all, thank you for this invitation. I'm very pleased to be a part of this conference today and to be in a position to share some of our insights from Raiffeisen Bank Kosovo. So uh, our corporate culture is linked to social sustainability with a special emphasis on health and well-being of employees, as well as work-life balance. And when we go to three key reasons why, the first one is the retention element. We work a lot and we want to retain our people. And we want to show that we have attractive company. The second element is related to engagement. We want engaged people, we want engaged employees. When they are happy, when they are motivated, they will be engaged. They will bring higher performance. They will bring higher productivity. And the third element is attracting talents. This is our offer, our AVP that we offer to our people inside and outside the company, which makes us employer of choice and we want to maintain this brand and go further with this success. Thank you, Arta. And EVP, for those who don't know that term, Employer Value Proposition, the plan for employer branding. So yeah. thank you so much. Thank you. Alban, your three wins, reasons. Okay. Uh, on the core values of our company, we have innovation, sustainability, and contribution. When we were presented uh, this initiative and uh, the idea to participate on this project of UN. FPI. For one thing, I, we, we didn't know so much about these policies, but uh, we were sure that for sure that was an innovation uh, for us. It would be an innovation for us, would be a chance to contribute more, and would be a chance uh, for more sustainability uh, policies also for the company. And uh, we found out during this almost two years now that we are working that uh, this family-friendly policies was a good chance to contribute, to contribute to the society and uh, to strengthen our convince that uh, businesses are not only there econo as economical uh, instruments for people to give them the economical means to live, but they should be also social agents to make, the, uh, to make the society a better place, a better world, and to strengthen the, the, the cell of the society, which is the family. The third, the, the second one was that we saw that uh, this approach could be also profitable, would be profitable because we think and we are uh, uh, verifying that uh, we are having more attraction, more, uh, we are more attractive in the labor market. And uh, in the last month, we had the lowest level ever had of uh, leaving of employees, especially for the, season, for the summer season, because we are close to the, to the seaside. So uh, we see that in this situation that 
everybody in our region, companies are complaining that people are leaving, are leaving countries, not only companies. We are not hearing it. So, and the last reason was that at the end I thought, if nothing is happening, I will be surrounded by more cheerful and smiling faces of employees. <laughs> A reason really not bad at all. Uh, thank you all. So with that start, now let's try to figure out how to walk the talk uh, when it comes to the most important key in developing these kind of cultures needed. Uh, top level role models, um, but also others following your examples. So we have one uh, live top level manager who took two paternity leaves here in this panel and we really would like to hear from you now your personal story because you took paternity leave um, twice, Sergio, first time 14 days and second time two years as CEO of a company. And uh, please tell us what made you decide to take parental leave? What was your reason? Thank you for the question. Uh, my story is uh, about free R, R, right place, right time, and right people. Uh, when uh, my uh, daughter is uh, born, I was a birth partner with my wife, my wonderful wife. And when I see my daughter, I decide to, to be with uh, her uh, the next time. And uh, I uh, take uh, two weeks for paternity leave. And uh, the first reason is to help my wife physical and mental to do homework uh, job and uh, to take care of uh, the older children. And the second time it took two years, right? Uh, so actually you supported your wife and uh, you also said that there were uh, benefits for the rest of the family than your wife. How did this initiative, your paternity leave, benefit the family? Uh, for family it's there are a lot of benefit, first of all. Uh, when um, uh, my, youngest, my younger daughter come, we have a uh, discussion, discussion with my uh, older children, and I explain to them uh, that uh, in our family come another member, and uh, they need to have more responsibility in family. But uh, actually, uh, the first three months are crazy because uh, the distance from all the all the children and the small one is around six years. And me and me, my wife forget what, uh, how to care uh, about children. And uh, we don't sleep at uh, night, we have uh, nervous, and we decide to, we need to, to change something. And we get uh, some courses, internet course, about how to uh, care, uh, ch child care. Uh, the course's name is uh, Sleep Expert. The, uh, this course uh, helps us very, very, uh, 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 very nice because we can sleep, we can rest, we can we have time with uh, to 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 our family. So actually, what you are saying is that it didn't only benefit your wife; it benefited uh, the whole family. You got the older kids engaged in helping you with the younger ones. Actually, you fostered a kind of gender equal family by taking paternity leave. Right? They saw. Yeah, yeah. Your role models also in the family for your yes. children. Yeah. Great. Uh, so, how did that benefit now coming to the core, and as the previous panel also said, and Kasha there too, how did that benefit the, uh, the company then, your colleagues? How did they react? Your, I mean, were they surprised or were they very positive immediately? Or? Yes, my colleagues uh, are very surprised because I work uh, uh, more than uh, 20 years in, this, uh, in, in our company and uh, Mm, they are surprised, but, but my colleague understand me because uh, the motivation and the, uh, the, the family are, uh, became, became the, uh, more, more important than the job. But friends, uh, my friends, uh, in this period, uh, the men don't go to parental leave. It's uh, new for our country. 
and uh, my friends uh, support me and uh, give me uh, more power to, to, to do this. Yeah, and actually you had friends following your example, right? Yes, yes, some <laughs> friends. And after that, uh, two of my colleagues uh, take uh, parental leave. It's uh, Victor and uh, Constantin who uh, do this uh, for hmm. his family. Thank you. So both friends and colleagues follow your example. And actually that is where we want to come. Because it's great to have top-level managers sharing their stories in social media and so about how they... Uh, believe in the importance, but we really need it to be real on workplace level every day. Thank you, Sergio, for your story. An applause, please. Uh, so continuing about this culture, uh, going over to you, Arta. Um, I know that you have uh, policies in your, in your workplace, for example, flexible working policies and so on, but how have you created this culture where people actually use it and not only talk about it, on top level and so on. How have you fostered that, please? Basically, we have a culture which is built on four values, and these are core four values. Collaboration, responsibility, proactivity, and learning. And when we were re introducing these four values, two years ago, we thought that it's not enough just to introduce it, but we have to do something that we ensure that our leaders are living it. And for the past two years, we were intensively running sessions with our leaders just to make sure that they are integrating themselves with these values, they are demonstrating, they are working with their people, and they are walking the talk. And in the meantime, we introduced also the flexible working hours. So this was introduced, and the leaders started to leave these uh, flexi hours themselves. And we have uh, shared this with our people, we have put a policy in place, and we are encouraging everyone to be a part of this scheme, to be a part of this working flexible hours, which was, in the meantime, with pandemics coming in, also combined with remote work. So people had a chance to choose their flexible working hours, to choose the environment they want to work, which was helping them to be more motivated, to increase their performance, to increase their productivity, to help with their mental health, as well as to manage the work-life balance to be closer to their family members, including children. As an example, some of them that were taking their children to kindergarten, they were using later on starting at the work before they were just uh, taking their children uh, to the kindergarten or leaving a little earlier and compensating in the other part of the day just because they had to be with their kids on taking them to the kindergarten and picking them up back. So this was an example, but in order to ensure that really our leaders are living it, we're running the surveys, voice of employee surveys, when we're asking our staff how your leaders are reacting on this, how you are supported with this. And the data we are receiving were at the high score on favorable. So this was showing to us that we are in the position where our, lever, uh, our leaders are really living these values and are going through along with their colleagues and their uh, like subordinates. So this is an example from my side. Hmm. Thank you, Arta. And I especially like that you actually measure, I mean, you do survey about the role, yeah. model, yeah. role modeling of your leaders. Um, so, uh, interesting to follow that. And you are not only walking the talk, you're walking your policies. <laughs> I mean, exactly. that's where we... Yeah. So, so, they're not only in the drawer. And the values very often also are... We've been talking a lot about value-driven organizations. When you were also at the study visit in Sweden, meeting companies there, um, to make values not only a folder in a drawer, but something that you feel and live. Um, and with that, I, I hand over to you, Alman, because we've been talking about your ways of um, both identifying and living values in your company. So tell me about that to build the culture. Okay. Uh, especially after this uh, approach, after this trial, let's say, of two years, uh, I am more than convinced that, uh, as also some other panelists said, that uh, uh, dealing with family-friendly policies is not an spending money, is not a cost, but is an investment. 
So in that regard, we are going to strengthen and to deepen our policies on, uh, within the company and also we would like to be a role model also in our area uh, for other businesses by uh, spreading this kind of, uh, of approach because uh, changes need, need a role, need, need a model. And uh, we, we would, would like to serve as a model and uh, at the meantime we want to deepen this uh, family-friendly policy also by inviting, by, 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 uh, inviting uh, also family members of our employees and to, to, to have activities we have already planned in order that we start to promote, to promote the, values, the values of the family, but not only with our employees, but also with their members, in order that we help to harmonize the way of thinking in the family of our employees, not just to, to leave our employees, let's say, alone in this uh, um, road, let's say, of improving the, 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 the families, but uh, make also their families think, their children, their parents, uh, brothers, sisters, think in the same way. And in this way, again, I am, a, I am an entrepreneur, I think that I will gain more employees for my, <laughs> for my business. So I, I, I think that it will be a win-win situation. So the society will win, but I am, I, I am more than convinced that also the business will uh, benefit from this kind of uh, investment. Thank you, Alban. And uh, let's take your own deep uh, experience, the, actually the change that you have made as, as a person, as you told me about the other day, the mind shift that happened. You said to me that you were not, you're not the same as a couple of years ago. Tell me what has happened with you, because your employees have, no, have noticed, you said. Yes. What okay. changed? I, I, thought, I thought that I am... <laughs> <laughs> I thought that I am a good leader, a social leader, but uh, I see that now I am a better leader. Uh, yes, because I, uh, three, years, uh, three weeks ago, uh, one employee, which has an important role in the company, came to me a little bit hesitant and... Uh, he said, Chef, I have something to discuss with you. Uh, I saw that he was a little bit embarrassed. Yes, tell me. Uh, I need your uh, understanding because at 4 o'clock I have to leave the company because I have to take my daughter from the kindergarten. It's the first year. And we supported him to find also the kindergarten as a company because we are also cooperating now with kindergartens in the city to, 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 uh, to support our employees with this. And uh, so maybe I have to miss and because I have to do this, I don't know what do you think and how do you consider. My reaction was immediately, yes, this is fantastic. You are going to spend time with your daughter? Yes. So you are going to take your daughter, you will have more memories with her, she will have more memories with you when she will grow up. So this is fantastic. Okay, let's do it. How to find some solution who can substitute you in, in the job and things like that. And he was surprised. Because one year ago, my answer, I am a little bit ashamed to say it, but my answer would be, this is your problem. You have to, to, to solve it. But now, he saw me that I was involved to solve his problem in order that he can stay more with uh, the daughter and uh, this is a good thing I said. You have to spend more time with her. And uh, okay, we, we spend uh, one hour uh, discussion how to spend uh, more time with children is something better and uh, my regrets that I didn't spend time equal with my children when they were uh, uh, younger. So. Uh, I saw myself at the end and I said, I said also to my family members that, okay, I shifted, I changed after this. You changed and never too, late, never too late to change. <laughs> it's a wonderful story. Thank you lots, Alban. Actually, you also mentioned the very important thing because uh, 
many don't get the chance, even though you realize now that it's a good thing, for example, to take paternity leave as a father and manager, maybe don't have the chance because the kids are grown up and you maybe don't want to take a second round. Um, but uh, you can be a very family supportive role model manager, even though you don't take parental leave yourself, just by promoting it to your employees in the way you do, convinced and also, also regretting that you didn't do it yourself. It's also a very strong um, feeling that they get. So thank you a lot. Um, I didn't know you before, uh, so I don't know how you changed, but your colleagues did here. <laughs> um, so, uh, about role modeling, now you also had a couple of managers, you said, what, like the father who came, who you really want to keep in the company, so you support, uh, you support them, him and a couple of others to go and get kids from kindergarten and work flexibly and so on. So let's go over to this area, because um, you, about kindergartens, I know that also, as uh, Sergio, you support that, Arta has a story. Um, and as always, I don't know exactly who I'm asking when. I'm just <laughs> spontaneously now picking you, Sergio, because your example of uh, childcare support, please tell us a little bit about that. Yes, our company uh, decided to, to uh, build a kindergarten company. And the last week, uh, we have uh, uh, financial help in FPA. We uh, opened the door of kindergarten inside the company. Uh, that uh, uh, helped our, my colleague to come uh, at work with uh, uh, children, uh, one year to, to three years, uh, and uh, uh, help, help him to combine uh, work with uh, family. Uh, I think we are the first uh, company in Moldova who uh, opened this, this kind of uh, uh, kindergarten in, in, uh, inside the company, and I think uh, uh, it's great to have a company in our country, in Moldova, in our country, to, to do this, because uh, in our industry, the professional, uh, we have a, a lot of uh, uh, um, handmade work, and in our industry, it's very, it's very important to have good professional. And if women or men stay, uh, stay, ho stay at home uh, and parented leave three years or four years, they forgot uh, the professional skills. And this, uh, uh, in this way, if we uh, give him the possibility to combine work and family, they uh, come back yearly. So they may come back earlier, and actually that is also something that can then improve, increase productivity uh, directly. This is a wonderful example, and we have uh, seen uh, in different countries companies supporting childcare while government uh, develops the, the, the national policies and support for that. Um, and actually that is something that you can do in different ways. You can open your own uh, or support another one. And here we have um, the story of you, Arta. When you when you came back from yeah. your parental leave, tell me about that. Basically, my story, when I reflect it now, uh, it gives me a feeling that even going back 19 years ago, we were, as a company, thinking of our people, of the mothers. But we didn't have it written somewhere. We didn't have a proper policy comparing to today, what we do. And my story is related uh, when I got my third child, and that time I was employed with Raiffeisen, very early stage of my work experience. And I had to come back after three months of maternity. Why? N 19 years ago, we were a merging country just after the war, very fragile. Our laws were very not well developed, if I may say. And we had the maternity leave uh, rule, which was only three months. On the other hand, we were a very new established company. And uh, demand for employees to be at the working place was very high. And I had to come back to work. My maternity leave was finished. And my first day in the office with my manager was, like, how I'm going to handle this? What will be the outcome? Maybe I have to quit today because I have no choice. I, how can I leave my three months baby home? And I was breastfeeding. So 
my first discussion and my first meeting upon my return was with my manager saying, Arta, how can I help you? How can we make this work? We need you. We are a new established company. We need you desperately. But on the other hand, we want you to ensure that you will be looking after your child properly. And I said, I don't know how we can handle it. And he said, let's find the kindergarten next to the building of the business. Let's find the kindergarten. Take your kinder, uh, child there. Go and breastfeed as much as you need, how many times you want. Just make your presence at the work. And then I did really that way, and it worked. So it worked. It was just five minutes walk from my office, going uh, every time they were inviting me for breastfeeding and coming back. And then the next step after, we, after this was, OK, let's discover if any other employees in the company are having their children taken to that kindergarten. And we did some research. We find out how many there are. And then my CEO said, OK, let's subsidize the kindergarten now. Let's give them some goods or money so they can improve their services towards the children of our employees. And it was really astonishing for me. And that made me really proud. And uh, still, when I talk today, I feel like that day. So it made me also uh, as an element to remain with the company for all these years as I am today. And I'm in a position to promote really family-friendly policies. Thank you, Arta. And that was, you know, the, how did you say, uh, 19 years ago? 19 years. 19 years ago, yeah. And you had a CEO, because that is where I also want to come here, the, a CEO who not only said, because there's a difference in saying it's no problem that you take parental leave and that it's a value that you take yeah. parental leave for the company. It's, um, it's okay. I mean, you, you got him to really meet you in a very natural way, exactly. so you didn't feel as a problem. Because that is a very difficult and abstract difference uh, to, to hear that it's okay to go earlier to get kids in kindergarten and to feel that it's okay. We have many companies where we've seen people going on sick leave, leaving the company, burnouts and so on, only by manager high eyebrows and sighs when they leave to get kids at kindergarten, even though the policy writes that it's okay. So we need to feel that it's okay. <laughs> that is hard to, to um, decide. But your role, your, your role modeling, from his role modeling, probably, so how about that? I didn't ask you about that before, but the rest of the leaders in the bank then. Uh, basically, we are just passing over the same, the same approach. Hmm. So we are learning from each other. We are taking, bringing these examples, and this is something that we are following, like uh, children follow the paths of the father or mother. So we are doing the same as the leaders are doing. Yeah, fostering yeah. the young ones to also yeah. be gender equal from start. <laughs> so uh, now you have uh, already done lots of things in your companies. You are doing new things. So let's um, talk about your next step what is your next step going to be in the short run and in the longer run so what are you going to do soon Sergio and uh, later okay for me uh, Eat we, cookies. <laughs> we, we change our culture we change our uh, mind in company you see this we change our logo we put he, this uh, a bird with uh, cherry I thought it was a child. Yeah, no, no, no. It's a bird, <laughs> like a bird with child, with baby. And we change our motto. Our motto now is uh, small pieces of happiness for each family. Oh. Yes, yes. Great. Yes, we, put, we, we are more social, more fam friendly, friendly uh, uh, company. Uh, we want to, uh, to develop this uh, project with kindergarten, to keep in touch in, gr in group with... Uh, our colleague uh, who go uh, to parent leave, and uh, uh, for a long time to uh, uh, have group with family, big family, our colleague to do something so, uh, social and uh, to continue to be different. And uh, I start now to be different. A small pieces for you, please. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's a. Uh, and for your colleagues, and uh, for uh, John, uh, really uh, QR code with uh, Pandelino. Yeah, thank you. Let it be marketing. Thank you very much.
that is wonderful. So you you want to con you want to be different. You say you want to continue to be different because you are very different in Malta, but you are very different for 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 the whole region, and that's what we need. We need companies that dare to be different, to dare to to do what you think is needed and all the way up. So meetings with parents on leave, for example, is a very concrete thing to do where you keep in touch with them individually, yes. but to gather them as a group yeah. is also very powerful. Looking forward to see that. Thank you, Sergio. Thank you. And uh, Arta, what are you going to do soon and later? Basically, we have been working on family and friendly policies, but we are not that good on promoting them. And we'll start promoting them properly We'll work on voice of employee tool to add questions specifically related to family-friendly policies and uh, life uh, work balance element. In the service. And yeah, this mm. is in a shorter plan. Mm. In longer plan, we want to enhance more on these family-friendly policies. We want to bring more elements in and to expand these policies for our company. And be role models in your big organization yes. from your country to the rest also, right? Yes. Great. Thank you. Alvan, what will you do? Uh, first of all, we are thinking for a full and long-term plan on uh, family-friendly policies within the company, but as I said before, also abroad. Uh, so this is the first thing that we are working uh, on. Secondly, we are taking considerably in consideration the building of uh, one kindergarten for the employees of our factory and maybe also surroundings, the neighbors of uh, our uh, industrial complex. At meantime, we are working also with the municipality to, 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 to see the possibility to invest in one of uh, public kindergartens that are closer to us, but uh, we are taking consideration uh, uh, more seriously to, to build our own kindergarten and. Uh, to be to be innovative also in this field of uh, of activity, let's say, to to, to make it uh, with our concepts and to impact more the social life of our employees and our region. Great, and then you can exchange experiences here between the countries with Sergio about this kindergarten idea and also with our time. Um, thank you a lot and we look forward to following you and your, your continuous steps because you are uh, all champion companies of this Expanding Choices uh, project are role models uh, for their local uh, colleagues in the country, other companies in the same context and so on. Um, now I'd like to end this panel with a key question that um, I carried for more than a decade now as one of the actually really most, um, the strongest and most engaging keys of wins uh, from family life. Uh, and that's actually how parenting and caregiving, and not only with children, but with all family members you care for, all the ones you care, uh, have near and dear, how that develops competence and skills, useful at work too, and one of the wins, because there are lots of KPIs and, and things to follow as we talked about retention and sick leave costs and uh, attraction and so on. But the competence develop when you become a parent. I'm going to give you as audience food for thought and bring that question back to yourself and your companies too because not only with children. What If you start with you Sergio because you have both, uh, you have soon five children, they are small, you are actually training uh, leadership every day at home. <laughs> uh, what is the one example of how you have benefited as a manager in your role since you become parent? <clears throat> uh, for me, uh, most important is family, and next is job. But uh, I think most important skills is uh, time management because uh, if you want to combine uh, combine family and uh, work, you need to be more uh, more concretely, more organization uh, to be, to be more organized. And uh, uh, the next is I think the next skills it's uh, to to my support of colleague because I can delegate my uh, to my colleague uh, a lot of uh, a lot of troubles and they support me uh, to do this uh, this job get uh, better. 
So actually developing a trust-based leadership, I would say, yeah. Arta, one example from you, even though your yeah. kids are grown up, uh, and that somebody said, I love that, uh, that uh, children are, I mean, it's a long, long, lifelong commitment, so even though you have grown up kids, you still train leadership with them, right? Uh, basically, you never reach the end. No. All your life you learn and continue learning. Even now, I have my children grown up, but still, when I think of what has been changed on me is this patience element, competence. That patience. Patience, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Being with children, managing them when they were smaller, now grown-ups are easily managed in different formats. Uh, and having been in a banking system, it was not easy. So I had to train myself to control a little bit my emotions, to be more patient in order to move forward. And this is my learning. Thank you. And Alvan, what did you develop with your kids, even though they were small for a long time ago, but tell me. <laughs> yes, already my kids are my colleagues because they are managers in my business now. So, oh, they uh, are working yes, with you. Yes. yes, they are managers there. Uh, they studied abroad and they came to work in Albania and uh, already has created their experience. But uh, what I learned as a parent and what they, they made me learn was to accept the mistakes and to see the mistakes as lack of experience as lack of procedures or as lack of guidance from my side and not as lack of responsibility, lack of, um, let's say, willing to work as I was used to see it before. Because before, when the mistakes were done from the other people in the staff, I used to see always some hidden things. And uh, I used to find, let's say, okay, ways to, 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 to improve, but also uh, measures to be taken. But now when I see the mistakes from my, 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 my kids, I, th I think two times, three times more, and I think that, okay, I have to accept that people can make mistakes and uh, that uh, mistakes should be analyzed in order to improve uh, the situation and not to create conflicts with, uh, with people and with the staff. Yeah, so accepting mistakes from your children and uh, keep them, still keep because them, you right? Cannot do with, with, get, what can you do with them when no. they make mistakes? You cannot fire them. No. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Wonderful example. So you have to accept uh, the mistake and analyze how can I solve this. <laughs> I love these examples. There are lots. Yeah. I have, we have like over 100 from the years we've been asking this question, a very simple question, how a family life in a broader sense develops skills leadership, self-leadership needed actually to meet the ongoing challenges in a very complex world based on empathy, trust, compassion and everything needed now. Not possible to learn at leadership courses but at home. So the learning arena the family is is very important. So try that question at home and with yourselves. So with that I would like to end this panel. I hope that you got some thoughts, stories. Uh, it was wonderful to hear you. Probably you have lots of questions to these panelists. I hope that you uh, talk to them uh, maybe afterwards or contact them because they have lots to tell, as have all the other companies, champion companies in this Expanding Choices pilot project, project um, by UNFPA and the Austrian uh, government. So, big thanks. Thank you.